<coughs> What's going on guys? <coughs> Welcome back to this video. Today's video will be on try hack me and we will be carrying over with intro to cybersecurity. So I've come to the end of this pathway and today we will be concluding this pathway by doing the last room which is about security operations. In the security operations room you will get to know basics, fundamentals and a premise about security operations center, who works in the security operations center and what are the responsibilities, the services, data sources, what is actually the security operations center. This is this video is good for those who want to get an intro. Now I have covered this before in a video. I'm gonna put the video in the description. And uh, this this video was about defensive security in general. I mentioned about the roles, the responsibilities, the career paths that you might need to take uh, when you aim for security, working in security operations center. So today let's cover let's cover the uh, introduction covered in here. Um, so that we complete this pathway. So as you can see the first thing is intro to security operations And here they define the uh, purpose of the security operations center So what do we do in security operations center? So basically in security operations center, operations center they work 24 hours a day seven days a week to uh, monitor networks and a security operations center can be can be working for the in-house company or they can be an agency who can work for other companies meaning they have a they have clients and they monitor the networks of these clients so you might be an in-house security operations center who is working for an agency and that agency has a clients which you need to protect or you could be working also as an in-house security operations center analyst but you are all you are working for your own company for um, not your own company you own but for the company that you uh, have been employed to work for so your services you are aiming you're aiming to protect the company's network you're not gonna bother with others networks such as when you work for an agency these are some of the typical things that you will be going through while you work in a security operations center. So the first one is find vulnerabilities on the network. So you will be periodically running vulnerability scans um, against the networks you require to protect. For example, if you have, if your company you're working for, um, they have a client, they have a client who is a bank. They have another client who is an oil company, another client who is a real estate company, whatever. Another client who is a communication company. So what you're doing will be running vulnerability scans against their networks. And their networks, the, the, it might vary actually. It could be the web servers. It could be the entire network, including the web servers, the uh, DNS servers the Active Directory Domain Controller, the endpoints. So you will be running vulnerability scans to find vulnerabilities. Detect unauthorized activity. So before, yeah, coming back to this. So you're not going to run vulnerability scans every day. You're going to uh, identify the assets that your client is using. So say that uh, your client is a bank and they use a DNS server, they use SAP server, local SAP server, uh, which is a system for finance, marketing, sales, logistics, so on and so forth. Those who work in SAP know what I'm talking about. They might have several assets. So we'll be adding these assets into your vulnerability scanning software, such as Nisus. And you will be running periodic vulnerability scans and check mark the, an option in Nisus to monitor for any new zero day vulnerabilities. So when this, when a zero day goes out or breaks out, you will be checking again or running a vulnerability scan one more time. Detect unauthorized activity. So again, after I've added the assets and identified what you want to protect, 
in your client network you will be aiming for protecting unauthorized activity unauthorized activity can be um, a suspicious login from unrecognized location to the website administration panel to the FTP server to the uh, company's network you'll be monitoring the logs this can be found from the logs you will inspect the logs and you will identify what is normal and what is abnormal to be able to detect that unauthorized activity discover policy violations so policy viola policies uh, are set by your client or your company in case you are protecting your company that uh, has hired you so basically if you are protecting a client the client might have a set of security policies that shouldn't be violated these security policies can be as you can see downloading pirated media files and sending confidential company files insecurely so downloaded me pirated media files could be downloading a file from torrent uh, a torrent file could be connecting to social media could be uh, um, what can be could be uh, uh, exceeding the uh, allowed download speed in the uh, network so all of these are set of security policies that are created when the information security program uh, is set by the information security department after these policies are created the uh, network security administrators will set rules in the firewall and the intrusion detection system to detect a policy violation so again you will discover the policy violations by inspecting the locks detecting intrusions as the name suggests intrusion is an intrusion it's an access unauthorized access to the company's network or to the client's network could be accessing could be having a shell uh, on a web server could be having an unauthorized access to the SSH server this is considered as intrusion because it's a shell so you'll also be inspecting or detecting intrusions again intrusions can be detected by monitoring the logs or by monitoring the security information event management the same devices for any um, suspicious traffic support with the instant response so the instant response is a process that is triggered after detecting an intrusion so when you detect uh, a compromise on one of the machines in the network or when you detect um, an unauthorized activity you will trigger an incident response so what is considered as incident vary from network to network network depending on the allowance or depending on how stretched how stretched are the policies but some clients consider an incident as any form of breach like having a shell or any system some com clients or companies consider an incident as in addition to detecting or in addition to intrusions could be policy violation can be an incident unauthorized activity can be an incident it depends what does SOC stand for it's clear and it's also clear elements of security operations so here they mention uh, from w what are the kind of data that you will be working with so basically you will work or you will uh, sift through server logs could be whoops, could be Apache server logs DNS server logs IIS server logs in case you're using Windows for hosting a web server uh, so any sort of logs on the server side DNS activity now DNS activity can be detected through sifting through the DNS logs but you might be telling me that yeah I don't have time to go through server logs Apache logs DNS logs firewall logs why don't we gather all of these data sources in one place and that's when we or that's when we bring the seam to the table Splunk Wazoo uh, not Wazoo Wazoo it's an IDS but can be used yeah you can say uh, Splunk um, IBM Curator uh, all of these are seams also Elasticsearch can uh, can ingest all these data so instead of monitoring these separately you will be gathering them right feeding them into a seam device such as a seam system such as Splunk what uh, I, th I talked about them I'm not gonna repeat but it's essential to understand what are the data sources you are working with 
Okay, soak services. I think we why I don't why are they repeating this? Anyway, so we said there is a vulnerability management in SOC. You do vulnerability management. You are monitoring the security posture. So basically, when you monitor the network for suspicious traffic, you are assessing assessing the security posture. Malware analysis. So when does you provide malware analysis services? So basically, in SOC, the team is divided into tiers: tier one, tier two, tier three. So Typically, malware analysis is mostly assigned to those who work in Tier 2 and Tier 3. So when an incident is discovered and a case is created, <coughs> if they found that a malware is the root cause or was the root cause of the compromise, they will you receive a ticket from the Tier 1 team telling you, hey, we found a malware, can you please analyze and find the root cause? So Tier 2 team will, do, will conduct a basic analysis on the malware if they found out the nature of the malware, where it's coming from, what's the family of the malware, uh, they will close the incident and they will uh, perform um, a complete uh, purification, let me call it, on the machine, infected machine. But if the malware is complicated, they will send it to people who are more experienced in malware analysis. These people are typically in tier three. Intrusion detection, we talked about this. Reporting, so basically you will report to the client what happened in the network and you will send them uh, maybe depending on the agreement with you between you and the client you will send them weekly reports minutely reports <laughs> uh, monthly reports on their po security posture now this one threat hunting so basically when you analyze malware you are basically hunting for the threat you want to find out what's the root cause what was where 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 was this coming from so so on and so forth threat intelligence here uh, after analyzing the malware you will try to identify the techniques, the tactics, techniques and procedures. We talked about this in the MITRE framework. You will build a profile okay, uh, about the attacker or the adversary and what are the tools they employed to create the malware and communicate with the C2C. You also do this. Not alone, of course. All these tasks will be distributed among your team. Example scenario, we, we mentioned many example scenarios actually why in this video, so no need for this one. What does NSM stand for? Network Security Monitoring. Practical example of SOC. So here is a very simplified version of an example in SOC. So basically, let's open the view site. Okay, so the website at this IP is under attack. This is the website. Quickly add some firewall rules to stop the server from crashing. So here they jump directly to the scenario. Let me give you some intro how you might come to this scenario. So basically while you are inspecting um, uh, the SIEM software or you could be receiving an alert from your IDS that hey, the IDS will tell you, could be Snort, could be Wazoo. It's gonna tell you, hey, this web server or this IP address is receiving an abnormal amount of uh, packets. Now, how the IDS will tell you that, basically will tell the IDS that if this web server receives more than X number of packets during a specified time frame, give me an alert because this is an indication of a DDoS attack. You will configure this on the IDS. So after you configure this, if an incident happens, the IC, IC, uh, IDS will tell you that, uh, hey, this web server is receiving an abnormal amount of traffic in the millisecond or in two seconds or one second. For example, it's receiving uh, 1,000 packets a second or 100 packets a second depending on the configuration and then you will and the ideas will raise an alert which will escalate to an incident so you have an incident now i know how it happened let's go now to the incident so basically as you can see here this ib is sending a high number of packets per second to this web server and it's causing the server to crash so this is a typical scenario of a distributed or denial of service attack so what are you going to do here you're going to escalate this incident uh, you're going to quit first the event will be converted to an incident and you will ask you will declare an incident you have an asset under attack now you will define the type of the attack and the impact 
or the level of damage. The type of attack here is clear. Based on the IDs alert you have received, it's a distributed denial of service. Or it could be only denial of service attack. So the first that's the first step. Now the impact, if you leave the attack going on, you will cause damage to the swap server and then you will have downtime, which means a loss of money. So that's the first step. You declare the incident, you identify the type of incident and the impact of the incident. Next, what you will be doing, you will isolate the asset. This is the asset here. What you're going to do, you're going to isolate the asset, meaning if possible, cutting the internet access. We will isolate this asset from the network. Okay. So if we isolate that from the network, it will no longer receive the malicious packets from the source. In case of distributed denial of service attack, most of the time you will be doing this. I mean, you cannot avoid isolating the uh, asset from the network. I know it may cause a loss of money, but it's it can cause a little bit loss of money. It's better than huge losses if you leave the asset connected to the internet and receiving the malicious packets. So isolating this meaning cutting the internet access so after we cut the internet access we, what we were going to do since this is a network attack we will be adding the IP address of this machine into the the, the uh, firewall and block it now as you can see all the red packets are prohibited from passing through the router to the web server I created two rules the intended one was on port 80 and you get the flag so after you have contained the incident as we did you're going to uh, inspect the machine and make sure that the machine doesn't have any malware now this might include some forensic but basically after you have isolated the machine and after you have blocked the IP address you're going to um, have a backup okay of this machine you're gonna clone the machine and work on the cloned copy in your lab you're not going to perform any live inspection on the machine this is a production machine so we, what we will be going to do here after having cloned the uh, infected version or the infected OS from this we're going to, we're going to Im implement or restore uh, from the latest backup and have the server up and running as soon as possible on this side, you will have the cloned infected version of the OS. You'll analyze it on your own time and make sure why or find out why this, is, why this has happened. This is how you will do it in a realistic scenario. So if you want here, I have gathered all of the uh, notes about the instant response. You can find them in Blue Team Notes. If you are subscribed to the channel membership, you will find them in the notes. I have mentioned all of these operational notes here who might be a needing if you are working in a SOC or if you work in forensics. So that was it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, one more thing. It's the flag. We found the flag. So that was it. And officially we have finished this track. Um, next I'm going to start with this track. There is the careers in cyber. but. I did a video on careers in cyber. You can check out the. Uh, I can put also the description of the video and the link. Uh, link of the, <laughs> the link of the video in the description, and uh, this is gonna be a no-brainer for you. In the next upcoming videos, guys, we will be covering maybe pre-security for you. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and definitely I will see you later.